Hi everyone, so in this topic I'm going to discuss the ground state electron configuration of elements in the at atomic form as well as the ionic form, okay? So the idea of the ground state electron configuration is this is probably something that you've done before in prior chemistry courses in either in high school or in um, uh, introductory courses in the college and um, the concept itself for writing this electron configuration is rather simple but you might have not understood exactly why you're writing them this way so what we're gonna do in this in this lecture is really to talk about the reasons you know coming in from the wave function form of the orbitals why we're writing the electron configuration a certain way and there's uh, three things you want to keep in mind when you're writing these electron configuration uh, for the ground state, okay? And they're always ground state except if, you know, they're, uh, something says about excited state. But the ground state is basically, the idea is you're filling in the uh, orbitals but using electrons starting from the lowest energy orbital, okay? Because ground state means the lowest energy um, structure or con uh, configuration so you have to start with the lowest energy orbitals first and this is based uh, and then in, in terms of you know which orbital you should go in first then uh, this comes from what we talked about in the previous topic which was the fact that because of electron penetration and shielding in multi-electron species the orbitals that uh, order from lowest to highest is 1s 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, uh, in fact 4s, uh, and then 3d, uh, etc. Okay, and this is of course referred to as the Aufbau or building up principle. You go, you built up from the lowest to the highest energy orbital. And remember that there was a, there was a basically a mnemonic device for you to remember how this order goes. And what you need to do is again. Um, basically draw a diagram that looks like this with the y-axis being the principal quantum number and then the x-axis being the angular momentum quantum number. If you start with the s, p, d, and f orbitals and you draw these diagonal arrows going from right to left, you'll find that you always get the correct order in this case because that helps you uh, determine which orbital will follow after the um, the first you know the first uh, uh, orbital okay so this is probably something you want to again memorize or keep in mind I would I would say and in cases of exams or quizzes you want to quickly have this ready maybe write it up right away so you don't forget which orbital follows which orbital okay now the other two concepts that go along with writing ground state electron configuration uh, in addition to starting from the lowest energy orbital is uh, something called Pauli exclusion principle. We talked about this before and this is the idea that each orbital can have a maximum of only two electrons and those two electrons must have opposite spins. So if you remember that the, we talk about Pauli exclusion principle when we talk about the uh, magnetic spin quantum number for the electron and remember that experimental observation uh, showed that uh, electron uh, have two uh, opposite uh, spins and Pauli basically made this uh, proposal that orbital can only accommodate two electrons and they have to have these opposite spins in order to to uh, satisfy the law of nature and the third rule or third lo uh, law that you want to keep in mind here is that if you have degenerate orbitals and remember that the word degenerate here refers to orbitals with the same energy okay for example your 2p x, 2p y, and 2p z orbitals all have the same energy, right? When you have uh, electrons and you have to fill in these orbitals, you're going to fill them one at a time first or singly occupied with parallel spins, meaning that you're going to fill them up all, you know, up spin, for example, before you start pairing them, before you start putting in the opposite spin, okay? This is what we refer to as Hunt's rule. Uh, it was discovered by Hunt uh, in a spectroscopic study of um, electrons. And the idea here is that, you know, when you're putting electrons, uh, because they are they have the same charge, uh, the electrons have the same charges, they're going to repel each other. And as a result, in order to minimize repulsion, you want to place the electrons at different orbitals before you start pairing them. 
So I want to highlight here basically these this two principles, these two laws, Pauli exclusion principle and Hunt's rule. So the top one here illustrates Pauli exclusion principle. Um, when you're writing electrons, again, a maximum of two electrons per orbital, but also the electrons have to be paired. Paired here meaning that they have opposite spins. So you can't write um, electrons like this. The electrons are usually symbolized as, as arrows because the arrows... Uh, Basically, each arrow indicates the spin of the electron. So, uh, top arrow would indicate a, you know, a half uh, plus one half spin. For example, a bottom one would indicate a negative one half spin. So, when you put two facing up like this, then you're saying that they both have plus one half spins, which uh, we don't observe in nature. So, as a result, the correct way to write the uh, electron configuration would be to have a plus one half and negative one half. Okay, so up and down like this. Now. The second thing to to note, by the way, is that uh, this is correct based on Pauli exclusion principle, but it's actually incorrect based on Hund's rule. Because remember, in Hund's rule, if you have degenerate orbitals, like in this particular configuration, we have 1s uh, with two electrons, 2s with two electrons, and 2p with two electrons. These 2p orbitals are all degenerate. They all have the same energy. Okay, so instead of actually putting them all at the same we first we have to separate them so in other, in other words we have to actually put one uh, electron here and one electron here so we can't put them both in the same orbital first because if we do that then we're going to have a higher slightly higher energy because of the electron electron repulsion okay so that's what Hunt's rule is the top one is Pauli exclusion principle it's saying that you cannot have the same spin in one orbital and the second one is a Hunt's rule which is that if you have you know, degenerate orbitals, the electrons have to be separated before they can be paired up. Now, let's talk about how we actually write this electron configuration. Uh, you might be really familiar with how to do this, you know, back from, again, from an intro course uh, or from high school, and it's usually fairly simple to write these things, but you might not understand exactly why you're writing them. So let's explain how this notation for electron configuration comes about. It really all comes from the wave function itself, okay? Remember that when we calculate the energy of a, of a polyelectronic atom, right, what we have to do is we have to solve the Schrodinger equation for the wave function uh, in that atom, right? So if you think about the hydrogen atom, for example, there is a, there is a wave function that represents the hydrogen atom, okay? And that wave function, again, is expressed in spherical polar coordinates, so it has three variables in it, which is r, theta, and phi. And when you, um, try, when you want to calculate the energy of the hydrogen atom, what you're doing is you're applying this h hat, you know, this Hamiltonian operator to that wave function, and the resulting um, answer you get is a series of energy levels in that wave function for the hydrogen atom. Okay, you can imagine that this is this is you know for the hydrogen atom. If you're talking about the helium atom, which has two electrons, that would mean that you're going to have a wave function, which has the uh, coordinate for the first electron r one theta one phi one, and coordinate for the second electron r two theta two and phi two. And then what you're doing, if you want to calculate the energy of the helium atom, is you have to apply the Hamiltonian on this wave function to obtain the energy levels for that wave function. As you can see, this is now becoming a six variable equation. That's very, very difficult to solve, okay? Um, and if you go to even lithium atom, which is just only the third element in the periodic table, now you have three electrons, which means you have a nine variable equation. And that, at some point, is actually impossible to solve. It's not just difficult, but it's actually impossible to solve, okay? Because you get so many different variables uh, in the equation that there's no way you can actually solve the equation, uh, the Schrodinger equation. So what we do in, uh, in practice to determine the energy of these higher level atoms, higher, you know, the, the atoms with more electrons than one, is we make approximations to make the calculations even possible to do. And the approximation that we, we, we make is something referred to as the Hartree orbitals. Hartree is the person who actually uh, came up with this method. So the idea is the following. Let's say you have a 
you have a six you know dimensional function you know six variable function like this instead of um, writing these as a six variable function you would actually separate it out into two wave functions each one with three variables and believe it or not this is actually easier to do than something like this okay so in other words you would write the wave function for the helium atom instead of psi of these two things, these six, all of these six things, you would write it as psi of r1 theta 1 phi 1 for electron number 1 and psi of r2 theta 2 uh, phi 2 for electron number 2. And these are what we call hydrogen-like wave function because they look like the, hydro the wave function for the hydrogen atom because it only has three variables in them. So it's sort of like multiplying these hydrogen-like wave functions and as a result we're able to get something that's approximates the wave function of the helium atom. So another way of saying this of course is you're taking the psi or the wave function for electron number one and multiplying it by the wave function for electron two. Now because the electrons in helium, you think about the electron is going to be in the 1s orbital, what you're doing is you're taking the wave function for electron one in the 1s orbital, right? multiply by the wave function for electron 2 also in the 1s orbital. As a result, it's really psi of 1s times psi of 1s again for the second electron. And what we do in this case is we then write it in a shorthand notation as 1s of electron 1 times 1s of electron 2 with the understanding that that refers to the wave function. And then of course it becomes the notation that you're familiar with which is it's written just as 1s squared okay now so that 2 there really refers to the fact that the wave function is being squared because you have the two wave functions uh, of the 1s orbital and they're being squared however a lot of times we would just say that this is 1s2 meaning that there's two electron two of the 1s wave function they're being multiplied together okay so that's really where that notation comes about the 1s uh, wave function, uh, the 1s2 uh, notation.